Hi, Jessica. Every quarter of a mile, you'll see a speed limit sign. Over the course of a year, SDOT has added 2,500 signs, a way to tell drivers to slow down. The National Safety Council says traffic deaths in 2020 were the highest in 13 years, despite the pandemic impacting driving patterns. One of the ways to change that, the NSC says, is by doing something Seattle just completed. And speed is one of the critical factors that determines um, both how many crashes there are and the likelihood that someone is to survive if they are hit by a car. Since December of 2019, the Seattle Department of Transportation has been lowering speed limits to 25 miles per hour on most major roads. That's about 415 miles of city streets. We found when you've got a more consistent speed limit across the city, people know that, that, the, that the default speed limit is 25 miles per hour. People are more likely to follow it. SDOT spokesperson Ethan Bergerson says case studies show a 20 to 40 percent drop in the number of crashes in locations with new 25 mile per hour speed limit signs. It's something that could help with the city's Vision Zero initiative to end traffic injuries and deaths by 2030. If someone is hit by a car traveling 25 miles per hour, they're twice as likely to survive as someone hit by a car traveling 30 miles per hour. Bergerson says adding 2,500 speed limit signs across the city is especially helpful in high crash areas like Rainier Avenue South. That's where we saw this crash earlier today. So how much did this cost? Taxpayers paid $1.25 million to install the signs, but the work doesn't stop here. The speed limits are one part of a much bigger picture. SDOT is also working on adjusting traffic signal timing, giving people a head start while they cross the street before giving cars the green light. Live in Seattle tonight, Britt Moore, King 5 News.